Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's the time to go through the first ever power rankings, the Tennis Talk power rankings for the week. And we're going to go through the top 20 players over the last couple of weeks. And this is a different ranking system to what we're normally used to. It's actually a combined ranking system with men and women involved. Doesn't matter if they're not playing each other, they're still going to be a part of this system. This ranking system is a little bit different. It's based on who wins what tournament, but it's also based on who they beat as well. So we're going to have a look at the top 20. Let's start with number 20. So starting with the 20th player on the Tennis or Power Rankings, it's Danielle Collins. And of course, she's had a really great 2022, got to the Australian Open final, but then was injured for a little while there. And after getting to the quarterfinals of Miami, she will sneak in at number 20 for this week. At number 19, Riley Opelka had a very good season so far, winning a title in Dallas. He didn't do great in Miami, but he did do good in Indian Wells. And that's why he is at number 19 in the ranking. Having a look at number 18, and it's Oje Aliasim. Now, he's won a title this year, beating Pass along the way, so he's got a big win under his belt with that. Also making the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, that helped him a lot. But it hasn't been great over the last month, which is why he's down so low at number 18. Coming in at number 17 is Simona Halep. Of course, had a really good start to the year. And of course, recently got to the semifinals of Indian Wells, but unfortunately not playing in Miami having to withdraw from that tournament has hurt her ranking. So she comes in at number 17. At number 16 is Ostapenko. Now we know she's had a really good season beating Iga Swiatek in the year. So that's why she's in the top 20 for the rankings. It hasn't been great over the last month. So that is why she only slots in at number 16 when maybe a month ago, she would have been a lot higher. Coming in at number 15, Hubi Hercatch. Had a very solid season thus far, even though he didn't defend his Miami title. and But he has done very well over the season and beaten some good players along the way. So he comes in at number 15. Coming in at number 14 is Kasper Rude. He just beat Alexander Zverev in Miami, of course, making the final of Miami as well. He's also won a clay court tournament this year. So he comes in at number 14 in the tennis store power rankings. Coming in at number 13 is Annette Contevate. Now, she hasn't done great lately, but a lot of her results at the start of the year, of course, winning St. Petersburg, that really helped her ranking. And she made the Doha final as well. So because she did so well in February, that's how she's into the top 20 still. Coming at number 12 is Cam Norrie. He's had some good wins this season, beating City Pass in Acapulco and also playing very well in Indian Wells, defending some points there after he won the title last year. So Cam Norrie, he's in at number 12. At number 11, Naomi Osaka. And that's basically because she made it all the way to the final in Miami. A month ago, she wouldn't have been a part of these rankings, but thanks to that Miami final, she gets into the number 11 spot. All right, coming into the number 10 spot now, and it's Daniel Medvedev. Now, maybe you think it might be a little bit low that Medvedev's down at number 10, but if you look at his record for this year, hasn't won a title, and he also hasn't beaten anybody really. Could have easily beaten Rafa at the Australian Open, which maybe put him in the top five, but Medvedev hasn't beaten that many good players. He has beaten Pass, of course, to start the year off, and he's also reached world number one this year, but over the last month, he actually actually hasn't beaten anybody in the top 30, which is why he's so low down at number 10. Coming in at number nine is Kedjmanovic. Now he's had a great couple of weeks. He's actually had a great 2022. Almost beat the eventual champion in Miami in Alcaraz. He was two points away from victory there. Played well at the start of the year, got to the fourth round of the Australian Open. So he has been a solid player this year and he is in at number nine in the power rankings. Coming in at number eight, is Taylor Fritz, and of course, Indian Wells was the big one for him. He beat Rafa in that tournament, which is a huge, huge win for anybody. He's the only one to beat Rafa this season. So he comes in at number eight, mainly because of that Indian Wells run. Coming in number seven is Maria Zachary, and of course, she's had a pretty decent season this year. Hasn't done well over the last week or so. Miami wasn't a great tournament. Indian Wells, though, was a very good tournament, and that's why she comes in at number seven. Coming in at number six, Andre Rublev. Now, he might not have played well in Miami, and he has dropped down to number eight in the main rankings for the ATP, but he has won two titles this year, and he made the semifinals of Indian Wells, so that is why he comes in so high at number six, whereas someone like a Medvedev, for example, is down at number 10. Coming in at number five is Yannick Sinner, who's just been a very solid player this year. And again, he may not have reached the heights of someone like a Medvedev or, or won a title like someone like an Ali Asim, but, but he's just been really solid. He got to the quarterfinals of Miami and then eventually had to retire. Unfortunately, had to retire in Indian Wells as well. But making the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, that's why he's so high up at number five. All right, getting to number four now, and it's Paula Badosa. She has been very solid over the last month, making it to the semifinals of Indian Wells and also the quarterfinals 
of Miami. Also won the WTA 500 event in Sydney at the start of the year. So she's been very consistent throughout the season and she's also beat some big names as well. So that's why she's at put number four. Coming in at number three, and this is probably no surprise, it's Carlos Alcarez. He has been so good over the last few months. He's only lost two matches for the season. One of those was against Rafa. One of those was against Berrettini. So not too bad losing to some of the best players on the planet. But he's also just won the Miami Open, beating a lot of good players along the way. So well and truly deserves to be in the top three. Coming in number two is Rafa Nadal. I mean, the Spaniards are just dominating this list up the top. He comes in at number two for obvious reasons. Winning the Australian Open, winning Acapulco, uh, getting to the final of Indian Wells. And maybe if he had won Indian Wells, he might have been in the top spot. But... Man, you can't argue that Rafa's definitely in the top of the game when it comes to form in 2022. And top spot might not be a big surprise to a lot of you, but then again, some of you might be thinking, well, I don't know if she deserves to be on the top of the rankings, but I think she does. It's Iga Swiatek. She has just won three Masters 1000s back to back to back. The only losses she's had this year, one was to Barty at the start of the year. One was in the semifinals of the Australian Open, and then there was an upset against Ostapenko. So you can't deny that over the last month or so, she's been the best player, not only on the women's game, but the best player out of everybody, including the men as well. So Iga Swiatek, she tops the power rankings for this week. So there you have it, the Tennis Talk power rankings, the top 20. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you surprised that anyone's not in those rankings? Surprised that someone's not in the rankings? Surprised that somebody's maybe not higher in the rankings or maybe someone who's a little bit too high in the rankings? I'm a little bit shocked that Sin is so high in the rankings, but of course, it's not based on my opinion. It's based on who he's beaten and how he's done over the season. So, you know, maybe people are underrating him a little bit. And uh, even though he's outside the top 10 of the main rankings, he's actually had a pretty good season. Where he's surprised that some players are a little bit lower than they should be. Maybe Medvedev should be higher, considering he's made the finals of the Australian Open. But he hasn't won a title this year. That's a big, it's a big thing. And he hasn't really beaten anyone recently up the top of the game. So let me know down in the comments below. Is there anyone missing from the rankings or are you surprised at how the rankings have turned out this week?